Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's Word Study, where we continue with the book of Amos. Today we're going to look at chapters 4, 5, and 6. And uh, before we begin our study, let's pitch this tent with Elohim. Let's bow our hearts. O oh, Abba, Father, we come before your mighty throne, Father, to worship you, to praise you, and to thank you, Father, for revealing yourself, your beloved Yahid, Yeshua, and your indwelling Ruach HaKodesh to us. And Abba, also for washing us in your word, causing us to grow in your word that we may come to understand what it means to pitch tents with you. And Abba, as always, we pray to you, Father, in the name of your beloved Yahid, Yeshua, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah Echad. Amen. So, um, chapter 4, Verse 1, we read, Hear this word, you well-fed, pampered cows of Bashan. <laughs> now, Amos calls these wealthy women cows of Bashan. Bashan was known for its cattle and its beautiful pastures. So he says, hear this word, you well-fed, pampered cows of Bashan, who are on the mountain of Shomeron, that's Samaria, who are oppressing the poor, who are crushing the needy, who are saying to their masters, bring the wine now and let us drink. Verse 2, the Adon, Yahuwah, has sworn by his Kodeshah, that is his dedicatedness, that see the days are coming upon you when they shall take you away with meat hooks and the last of your descendants with fish hooks. Verse 3, And you shall go out through the breaches made in the city wall. Every woman straight before her meaning unable to turn aside, and you shall be cast to Harmon, says Yahuwah. Now, Harmon refers to a place of exile. Its location is unknown. Verse 4, Go to Beit El, that's Bethel, and sin. Go to Gilgal, where idols are worshipped, and sin even more. Yahuwah is being sarcastic, my friends. And bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Again, he's being sarcastic. And note, Bethel was the site of the golden calf, and Gilgal was another place of idolatry, that is, adultery against Yahuwah. Verse 5, burn an offering of thanksgiving with leaven and boastfully proclaim voluntary offerings, announcing them loudly, for this you so love to do, O children of Yisrael, Israel, declares the Adon, Yahuwah. Now, in other words, He's saying it's easier to do rituals than it is to be sincere and loyal in heart to Yahuwah. Isn't that the truth? It's easier to do rituals than it is to be sincere and loyal in heart to Yahuwah. Just like it says on the title screens to our Amos videos, Religion consists not in rituals, but in righteousness. Yahuwah, Elohim of justice, demands right living, not offerings or sacrifices. Verse 6, I also gave you cleanness of teeth, 
because of the famine, in all of your cities and lack of bread in all your places, but you did not turn back to me, declares Yahuwah. Verse 7, furthermore, I withheld the rain from you when there were still three months before the harvest. Then I would send rain on one city, and on another city I would not send rain. One piece of ground was rained on, and the part not rained on would dry up. Verse 8, so the people of two or three cities would stagger into one city to drink water, but would not be satisfied. And you did not turn back to me, declares Yahuwah. Verse 9, I wounded you with blight. That's from the hot, blasting east wind. And with mildew. And the creeping locust devoured your many gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees. But you did not turn back to me, declares Yahuwah. Verse 10, I sent a plague among you like the plagues of Mitzrayim, Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword along with your captured horses. And I made the stench of your camps rise up into your nostrils. But you did not turn back to me declares Yahuwah. Verse 11, I overthrew and destroyed some among you, as I, your Elohim, overthrew Sedom and Amorah, that's Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were rescued like a log pulled out of the flame, but you did not turn back to me, declares Yahuwah. Verse 12, Therefore, this is what I will do to you, O Yisrael, Israel. And because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your Elohim in judgment, O Yisrael. Verse 13, For look, He who forms the mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what are his thoughts, that is, declares to man what are Yahweh's thoughts, he who makes the dawn into darkness and treads on the high places of the earth, Yahweh, Elohim of armies, is his name. Chapter 5, verse 1. Hear this word which I take up against you as a lamentation, that is, as a dirge, as a funeral song, O house of Yisrael. Verse 2. The virgin of Yisrael has fallen. She will not rise again. She lies forsaken on her land with no one to lift her up. Note, in 722 B.C., the house of Israel fell. Verse 3, For thus said the Adon Yahuwah, The city that goes out by a thousand strong will have only a hundred left. And the one that goes out by a hundred strong will have only ten left to the house of Yisrael. Verse 4, For thus said Yahweh to the house of Yisrael, Seek me, that is, search diligently for me, and regard me as more essential than food, so that you may live. Verse 5, but do not seek a resort to Beth El, Bethel, to worship the golden calf, nor enter idolatrous Gilgal, nor cross over to Be'er Shiva and its idols, for Gilgal will certainly go into captivity and exile, and Beth El, Bethel, will come to nothing. 
Verse 6, seek Yahweh, that is, search diligently for him and long for him as your most essential need so that you may live or he will rush down like a devouring fire on the house of Yosef, Joseph. That's a reference to the ten tribes of Israel, Israel, the northern kingdom. The leading tribe in the north was Ephraim, descendants of Yosef's, Joseph's second son. And there will be no one to quench the fire for idolatrous Beit El, Bethel, the center of pagan worship in the northern kingdom. Verse 7, For those shall be consumed who turn justice into wormwood. Wormwood is to say that those shall be consumed who turn justice into bitterness and have cast righteousness to the ground. Now there, my friends, is a good description of America. Verse 8, He who made Kimah and Kesil, that is, the cluster of stars called Pleiades and the constellation Orion, who turns deep darkness and the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning and who darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. Yahuwah is his name. Verse 9, it is he who causes sudden destruction to flash forth on the strong so that destruction comes on the fortress and the stronghold. Verse 10, they hate the one who reprimands the unrighteous in the court held at the city gate, regarding him as unreasonable and rejecting his reprimand, and they detest him who speaks the truth with integrity and honesty. Verse 11, Therefore, Because you impose heavy rent on the poor and demand food taxes of grain from them, though you have built luxurious houses of square, hewed stone, you will not live in them, and though you've planted beautiful vineyards, you will not drink any wine from them. Verse 12, for I know your transgressions are many and your sins are great. They are shocking and innumerable. You who afflict the righteous and take bribes and turn away from the poor in the court of the city gate, depriving them of justice. Verse 13, therefore, He who is prudent and wise, he who has insight, will keep silent at such a corrupt and evil time, for it is an evil time when people will not listen to truth regarding those of good character. Verse 14, Seek, long for, and require good and not evil, so that you may live. And let Yahuwah, Elohim of armies, be with you, just as you have said. Verse 15, Hate evil and love good, and establish right ruling in the court of the city gate. Perhaps Yahuwah, Elohim of armies, will be gracious to the remnant of of Yosef. Joseph, that is, those of Yosef's bloodline who remain after Yahweh's judgment. Verse 16, Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, Elohim of armies, Yahuwah said this, There is wailing in all the public plazas, and in all the streets they say, Alas, alas, and they call the farmers to mourning, and professional mourners to wailing for all those who have died. Professional mourners. 
<laughs> that still knocks me for a loop. I mean, who would actually hire people <laughs> to mourn at someone's funeral? Verse 17, And in all vineyards there is wailing, for I pass through your midst in judgment, says Yahuwah. Now, my friends, we are going to look at the day of Yahuwah, that is the seven-year tribulation, especially the second half of that. Verse 18, Woe! Judgment is coming to you who desire and who are longing for the day of Yahuwah, that is to say, expecting rescue from the Gentiles. Why would you want the day of Yahuwah? For it is darkness, that's to say, it is judgment, and not light, and that is to say, it's not rescue and prosperity. Verse 19, it is as if a man runs from a lion, escaping one danger, but then a bear meets him, and so he dies anyway. Or, it's as if a man goes home and leans with his hand against the wall, and a snake bites him. <laughs> Verse 20, will not the day of Yahweh be darkness and not light? Will not the day of Yahuwah be very dark with no brightness in it at all? Verse 21, I have hated, indeed, I have despised and rejected your festivals, and I am not pleased with your solemn assemblies. Verse 22, even though you offer me your burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I do not accept them, nor do I even look at the peace offerings of your fattened animals. Verse 23, take the noise of your songs away from me. They are an irritation. I shall not even listen to the sound of your stringed instruments. Verse 24, But let right ruling roll on like water, and let righteousness flow like a mighty ever-flowing stream. Verse 25, Did you bring me slaughterings and grain offerings during those forty years in the wilderness, O house of Yisrael? You certainly did not. Verse 26, But you did carry along the idolatrous sikuth, that's a tent or a tabernacle, of your king, Keyun, that is Molech, the Babylonian god of the planet Saturn, used to symbolize Israelite apostasy, the pedestal of your idols, your images, and the star of your God. That's referring to Rafan, and that is the Rephaim. That's a certain group of fallen angels, Malachim, which you made for yourselves, and that star, which they made for themselves, refers to the six-pointed star also known as the Star of David. While you brought me none of the appointed sacrifices. Verse 27, Therefore I will send you to go into exile far beyond Damasic, Damascus, says Yahuwah, the name of the Elohim of armies. Now note, in 922 B.C., when Solomon married the daughter of Pharaoh, he got into Egypt, Egyptian idol worship, magic, and witchcraft, built an altar to Ashtoreth and Molech, and the six-pointed star, that is the chief symbol of human sacrifices in magic and witchcraft, and is featured prominently in Masonic rituals, came to be called 
the seal of Solomon. 666. There are six points, six triangles, six sides of the inner hex. The six-pointed star was used in burnt human sacrifices to Molech and to Ashtoreth in Baal worship. And Hitler forced all Jews to wear this yellow occult symbol to mark them as his burnt offering. And burnt offering, that's the very definition of the word holocaust. Look at Maaseh, Acts chapter 7, verse 43. It says, you also took along the tabernacle, that is a portable temple, of Molech and the star of the god Rompha. The six-pointed star is not a Jewish symbol, my friends, but an Egyptian symbol which Israel adopted in the wilderness due to their apostasy. And the six-pointed star is associated with the worship of Saturn, pointing also to their worship of gods of the stars and heavenly bodies and idols, that is to say, demons. And it's also important to note that America has done these same acts of whoring and will probably face similar judgment. Let's not forget the reproduction of the Temple of Baal's Arch, which was erected just last month in New York City. Chapter 6, verse 1. Woe, that is to say, judgment is coming to those who are at ease and carefree in Zion, Zion, Judah, Yehuda. And to those who trust in the mountain of Shomeron, those who trust in the mountain of Samaria, to those who feel secure with the distinguished men of the chief of the nations, to whom the house of Yisrael comes. Verse 2, go over to Kalne in Babylonia and look. And from there, go north of Damasek, Damascus, to the great city of Hamath. Then, go down to Goth of the Pelishtites, the Philistines. Are they better than these kingdoms of yours? Is their territory greater than yours? Now, Yah was referring here to formerly great cities. And in effect, he's saying, if these were so great and fell, who do you think you are? <laughs> Verse 3, do you put off the day of punishment, yet cause the seat of violence to come near? Verse 4, those who lie on luxurious beds of ivory and lounge around out on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall. Verse 5, they improvise and sing idly to the sound of the harp. Like Dawid, David, they've composed songs for themselves that is to say, improvising songs prolifically in mockery of Elohim. Verse 6, they drink wine from sacred bowls taken from the Kodesh temple, and they use sacred oil made Kodesh for anointing and massage themselves with it, and yet they're not grieved over the ruin of Yosef, Joseph, they're not grieved over the ruin of Yisrael, Israel. Verse 7, Therefore, they will now go into exile with the first of the captives and the cultic revelry and banqueting of those who lounge around on their luxurious couches will pass away. Verse 8, The Adon Yahweh has sworn by himself why? Because he can swear by nothing higher. The Adon Yahweh has sworn by himself. Yahweh, Elohim of armies, declares, I loathe and reject 
the self-centered arrogance of Yaakov, Jacob, Israel, and I hate his palaces and citadels. Therefore, I shall hand over the idolatrous city of Shomeron, Samaria, with all that it contains to the Assyrian invaders. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass that if there remain ten men in one house, they shall all die by the pestilence that comes with war. Verse 10. And if one's uncle or his undertaker will come to bring the disease-infected body out of the house to cremate it, he will say to another in the farthest part of the house, Is there anyone else with you? And that one will say, No one. Then he will respond, Hush, keep quiet, for the name of Yahweh is not to be mentioned even casually, for fear that we might invoke even more punishment. Now I ask the question, my friends, is that why they refuse to speak the Father's name? Because they know they are adulterers? Verse 11, For look, Yahweh is going to command that the great house be smashed, to pieces, and the small house to fragments. Verse 12, do horses run on rocks? Do men plow rocks with oxen? Of course not. Yet you have turned right ruling and justice into poison, and the fruit of righteousness into wormwood, that is, bitterness. Verse 13, you who self-confidently rejoice in Lodibar, that is to say, you who self-confidently rejoice in nothing, you who say, have we not by our own strength taken Karnaim for ourselves? Note, Lodibar and Karnaim were Aramean sites that had been captured by Israel. And Amos is using the meanings of these names as a play on words to rebuke Israel. Lodabar literally means a thing of nothingness. And Karnaim literally means a pair of horns. And the horns of animals were regarded as symbols of power. And Amos is condemning Israel for claiming that their victories were achieved without Yahweh's help. Verse 14, For look, I am raising up a nation against you, O house of Yisrael, declares Yahweh, the Elohim of armies, and they will afflict and torment you to the entire limits of Yisrael, from the entrance of Hamath in the north to the brook of the Arabah in the south. And, 40 years later, Assyria conquered Israel. And that's our study for today, my friends. Amos, chapters 4, 5, and 6. We have three more to go. Uh, Yahweh's um, pronouncing judgment on those who disregard him and on those who bring his name to nothing. The commandment does not say, you shall not take my name in vain. The commandment says, you shall not bring my name to nothing, to naught. And, uh, his name is Yahuwah. Once again, I remind you, my friends, his name is not Yehovah or Jehovah. Yehovah was uh, concocted by a Catholic monk <laughs> in the 1400s. It was, that name was never 
given to man by Abba Father. And it literally means Yah, meaning Yahuwah, is chaos, ruin, destruction, and mischief. Yehovah. That's a descriptive title of Hashatan, a descriptive title of Satan, not the title of the Father. And anyone who uses that name is blind. I get upset about that one. His name is not Lord. That's the English way of saying Baal. His name is not God. There are many gods, and also God is a short form of the name Gadriel, which is the name of Hashatan, uh, mentioned in the book of Hanoch, Enoch the one who deceived Eve in the garden, God, Riel. Short form being God. You know, it's all, Satan deceives the world in so many ways, and, you know, it's been done for so many years. Everybody thinks it's normal. We say God, we don't mean Satan. And we say Lord, we don't mean Baal, no, but you're, the power of life and death is in the tongue, my friends. His name is Yahuwah, Elohim of armies, Elohim of battle. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's close with prayer. Thank you, beloved Abba Father, Yahuwah, for today's study and your word. Thank you, Father, for opening our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we might see, hear, and understand the power that is in your hands to create and to destroy. Help us, Abba, to see, hear, and understand that there is no other way but to give you reverence, to bow before your mightiness and the mightiness of your beloved, Yachid, Yeshua, your one and only unique son, your Yachid. Oh, Abba, we give this day to you, Yeshua, and your indwelling Ruach HaKodesh as we do every day thanking you, Father, for everything that you bring to us because all good things are from you. And praying in the name of your beloved Yahid, Yahweh, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Amen. Well, my friends, next week, Abba willing, uh, we'll continue with chapter 7 and see how much further we go. But um, as always, I hope and I pray that these studies are and continue to be a mighty beracha to you and yours. And uh, until next week, Shalom, my friends. Another working day Some would rather let it lie But the question Still remains